Hi everyone, I'm Philip. Thank you all for joining us. With me today is Masha Bazmanova. In this episode, we discuss a new open source C++ library and how it has the potential to revolutionize how we build data processing and storage platforms. Hello, Masha. Can you share a little bit about yourself and how you ended up working in big data and data processing engines? Hello, Philip. Uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, very excited to be here and talking to you about um, big data and Velox. I uh, joined the big data world a few years ago, uh, just kind of by chance. Uh, I was coming out of a maternity leave and I was looking for something new to start and work in. And I got introduced to David DeWitt. I ended up learning about uh, spatial joints, how to put them together, learning about Presto, learning how to make changes in Presto and made my first contribution to the big, big data uh, engines, which was a geospatial capabilities in Presto. They were consisting of like a package of geospatial functions after this first encounter with the big data, after like, you know, making this first contribution using the geospatial capabilities, I met another person, uh, Ori Erling, and he got me excited about making Presto run a lot faster than it was running at a time. In my mind and in, in the mind of people around me, Presto was a super fast, lightning fast engine. Everybody was super excited. Users loved using it. I personally thought it's awesome. And so here comes this person who says, you know, it's super slow. <laughs> it can be three, four, five times faster. <laughs> uh, there are lots of things that are done inefficiently. They can be done better. And so we launched a first project, our first efficiency project in a Presto called Project Aria, which was about making table scan more efficient. In that journey, we were like thinking, okay, but what's next? We noticed that using Java to write efficient code was pretty difficult. We were hitting roadblocks everywhere we turned. And so we saw that if we wanted to make Presto much faster, if we wanted to eliminate the inefficiencies we were seeing, we probably had to switch to a different language. We probably had to switch to a native language like C++. And so when we decided that if we want to make Presto fast, we have to go to C++, we have to write it from scratch in this new language. We thought about, okay, how can we make that investment pay more than just making Presto faster? We also saw that new engines were emerging, which were competing with Presto on efficiency, on speed, and they were all written in C++. They were all native engine. They were taking like a subset of the workload, optimizing it and showing that this workload can be executed many times faster than Presto could. But there was no single engine that would have all of those optimizations and features combined to allow for a wide range of workloads to run seamlessly, to run uniformly on a single platform. So we decided not to build a new engine, not to add to that family of already pretty large uh, engines, but rather build a library, a library which would serve as, as a core on which we could rebuild different engines which serve different workloads and do need to be slightly different, but they don't need to be different at the core. And so that's how we decided to build Velox. Uh, and that's what I've been doing for the past two, three years, building out the library, figuring out how to integrate it with Presto, Spark, streaming, machine learning libraries, about a dozen different uh, applications to provide seamless experience, very fast execution, and a single place to put all the optimizations. So besides being written in C++, how would you say VLOX operates differently than the core technologies it's replacing? 
So Velux is highly extensible. You can take it and build your own application on top of it. It's very flexible. And so it, 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 it plays into this new vision of everything being essentially Lego blocks. So Le Velux is one of the Lego blocks, very powerful, very useful, but it's a Lego block look that you put together with others to build a, a useful application. Cool. For clarity, what would you say VLOX is not or should not be used for? You would not provide it uh, as is to end users. Um, it doesn't speak SQL. It expects that the application would translate a query either in SQL form or in the form of a data frame or really any other input and convert it into like a query plan that's uh, optimized and ready for execution. And what are you most excited to see VLOX will have impact on? So we're looking to um, integrate VLOX with some of the most uh, uh, common and widely used engines like Presto, Spark, and Streaming. And in addition to efficiency, we're also looking for consolidation. Um, currently, um, many users have to stitch together multiple different systems to get their data to be ingested through streaming and then processed through some batch uh, pipeline and then shipped over to some sort of machine learning system to use something else to train that data and then produce models, publish them and uh, use them. And all of those systems are similar, but very different. With Velux, we are hoping to make that experience a lot better. We are hoping that the execution will become consistent. And we're hoping that also front ends will become more consistent as well. What challenges still lie ahead for VLOX? Like right now, we probably getting more contributions when we can handle uh, easily. So we need to figure out how to grow more folks who have enough knowledge about the project so that they can help with reviews help with onboarding new contributors, help do design reviews for new features or new ideas people want to bring into the project. So I see that as uh, probably the biggest um, challenge for the next year or so. Can you tell me about the decision to collaborate externally through open source? We didn't even consider building it closed source. First, because we thought that there is no way we can build it ourselves. We thought that we definitely would need help from folks who may not necessarily be at Facebook or Meta. And we also thought that it's such a complex project. It's going to take so much effort. We really wanted to see this effort pay off by contributing to something as big as you know, as possible. We didn't want it, the project to be limited to kind of one company, one use case. And so going open source was something that this is just how we build it from the get-go. And where should someone go to learn more about VLOX and get involved? Uh, we, uh, we have a GitHub repo and um, there is a, a landing page. There is a link to the documentation. So I suggest everybody starts by reading the articles we have in the documentation just to get a feel for what the project is about, what kind of code there is, what kind of functionality exists. And once you get yourself familiar, then introduce yourself, uh, share about what you're doing, and we will, we will engage. Well, thank you so much, Masha, for sharing your insights and your work with us. I'm excited to see the performance results as your team finalizes integrating VLOX into our production systems. Thank you very much, Philip. It was uh, nice to have this conversation with you, and thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.